A Friday edition of the PHNX Feedback Podcast right here on PHNX. Happy Friday to you all. My name is Derek Montia, occasionally known as a man struggling with an addiction to Korean pork belly nachos. This man next to me is my vice mayor, and he's also the person I call when I struggle the most. It's the one and only Jesse Friedman. Uh, and Jesse, speaking of struggling, uh, things are not good for the Arizona Diamondbacks because Arizona Diamondbacks starting pitcher Eduardo Rodriguez has in fact been shut down today, uh, according to Tori Lovello, uh, in regards to his left lat strain that he experienced. Uh, and also, that's, you know, it's it's just the thing. It's the thing that makes you throw your hands up and say, great, the big addition to the starting pitching <laughs> rotation uh, starting the year on the injured list. Of course, before we get into that, we do have to let you guys know that our spring training updates are presented to you by our friends at Factor meal kits head over to factormeals.com slash phnx dbacks 50 and use code code phnx dbacks 50 to get 50 percent off uh, both of us could very much use a factor meal right about now because we do not take proper care of ourselves whatsoever and uh that you know, is true we could we could use the ease of 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 that right about now Yes, I, I always can use the ease of a factor meal because yeah. I don't take care of myself. <laughs> and I, uh, especially during baseball season, Derek, meals are hard to come by, uh, especially like super expensive ones uh, at the ballpark. I, I try to stay away from that as much as possible, but mm -hmm. uh, it's eh, hard. It happens, it's hard. happens a little more than I would it, like it it's to. It's hard. Yeah, it's hard. Um, anyway, Jesse, uh, talk to the people about Erod. What are, what, what are we, what, how, why should we not? be absolutely panicked about this right now i mean i never said you shouldn't be absolutely <laughs> panicked uh no it really wouldn't be a diamondbacks uh free agent starting pitcher signing without a little drama on the front end right yeah. zach granke uh it when the diamondbacks signed him even it though that signing i think went pretty well when all was said and done granke was an utter disaster in his opening day start and did not pitch all that well for the diamondbacks especially at the beginning of that first season in arizona uh mad bum i've already gotten myself in trouble way too many times talking about him in the same sentence as erod uh but we all know how that started uh back in 2020 and then uh here in 2024 erod getting hurt before making his first uh start that actually counts with the diamondbacks so it's a tough break for sure uh, I'm not surprised at all, frankly, based on what we heard the other day and what we've been hearing the last couple of days. It seemed pretty far-fetched that Erod would actually be ready for opening day and that this would prove minor enough that he wouldn't have to miss any time whatsoever. But the good news is that I don't think Erod is necessarily going to miss all that much time. Uh, it's a little scary when you hear a manager use the phrase shut down, that a That's, player is being shut yeah. down. Uh, because there, there is a, uh, it, it's there's an indefinite nature to that where you don't really know exactly when the end point is. But there are reasons to believe that Erod won't be down all that long. This is what Tori had to say in regards to Erod being shut down. Okay, um, Erod has a lat strain. Um, <clears throat> he's going to be shut down from throwing uh, until he's asymptomatic. So. I know you guys want to know lengths of time, um, all the common questions that I want to know, but we don't know that. Um, it's going to depend on how he progresses uh, and how he's feeling day by day, and we're going to assess it daily and then build it out from there. And, you know, the, the return will be determined by the length of time that he's down. Um, and I can tell you that he's been feeling better day by day. So that's all I have for you. I, I, I don't know when he's going to start throwing. I don't know um, when he's going to be back. It all depends on when he becomes asymptomatic. 
did they say grade one or two to you? I didn't get that information, so I don't know that information exactly. Did he ever end up going for imaging after all? Or? He did. He did um, get some imaging that showed a lat strain. Who got it out first? You were, you were Steve. That's the moment where I claimed Jesse was first, and no, Jesse lost to Steve no, yeah. by a matter of seconds. Both Steve and Nick beat Did, me to that yeah, to, 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 the, to the tweet, yeah, by probably a matter of a matter of seconds. But yeah, you can hear there. Tori is is uh, he 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 won't give a timeline. He refuses to give any exact information right. on when uh, Erod will be ready to go when he is no longer asymptom or when he is asymptomatic. Right. Exactly. When he's no longer have any symptoms and. Erod himself described the injury as being very weird, said he only experienced this exact kind of thing one other time, but he doesn't know if it was the same injury because he never got imaging done at that point in regards to when he felt this. But, you know, again, as far as he is concerned, uh, it seemed like this would be the kind of injury that you just kind of shake off uh, and you come back a couple of days. He's happy he said something, obviously, for a few reasons. One, it's a spring training game. You don't want to go out there and, uh, you know, feel some sort of yeah. tightness and not mention it to the trainer and then have it turn into something worse during a spring training game. Uh, and the other thing, too, is is that, of course, you know, he did want to take precautions here when it came, uh, you know, to this the, to to the strain because of uh, he, he described it as feeling very weird and unusual at times. He also seemed to kind of not believe the diagnosis that it was in fact a latch strain when they got yeah. uh, imaging done. He said that when it came back, he, he kind of disagreed with it, that he actually had <laughs> something wrong with him. And that's why you get imaging done so that you know really you know what's going on. But uh, this is what Erod had to say in regards to how he feels and maybe you know where, where he's at, how far away he thinks he is from returning. I mean, like I say, like the, the way that I feel did that happen in the way that I feel the next day and the day after that? And I don't see it. I don't see it the way that um, that the MRI described it. So, so like in in what they told me, like I don't feel they like I don't feel like that. And so I will say, I will say it feels weird. It sounds weird to me when they told me like the way it is. So, but I'm I, but I'm really I really from I really had confidence that that it's gonna be way less time than they 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 were thinking. So. That's what we go away day by day because I really feel great. So that's what I'm saying. Doesn't gonna be that long. Did they give you a rough time frame or anything when they? No, no, no. Like I say, we decide it's gonna be day by day. We sure. how to feel every day. Like until I don't feel like nothing in there, and then they, they make sure like everything is strong and and ready to go. You know. So that's the way that and that's the good that I feel. <clears throat> that's how much good uh, I'm feeling that it's gonna be day by day. So gotcha. like every day will be better, and like today is a lot better. Like I will say, like it's close, like probably like 95% close to normal. So that's what we decided to go day by day gotcha. on that. Yeah. It, it feels 95%. Yeah, like it, that's what I'm saying. Like close to normal feels 95%. So like that's what we decide to, to go day by day on it. Rather than like shut it down for like a week or two, that's what we decided to go day by day because it feels, it feels really great. So um, we'll see how it comes tomorrow and the next day. And, and then when we plan to start playing catch again, so. You must have thought you Pulling back the curtain there a little bit, when I tweeted out that video, this man next to me asked me why I labeled it as day-to-day, -day. because as his mind works, this was not the official diagnosis that he is day-to-day, -day, right? Yeah, and he is not day-to-day -day in the sense that Of the, of most, the inj injured list. Like, Erod will open the year on the injured list. He is not day-to-day -day in that sense. But he did, I think we need, like, a, a, counter, a counter for how, for many, how, many, how many, times many times he said, he he said day -day? he's day-by-day. Yeah. Day. He yeah. definitely <laughs> wants us to know that. And he also reiterated, when you know, like, when he says there that, you know, he feels like he's about 95%, uh, you know, as far as being close to normal. Like, he, he feels very close. This whole thing definitely uh, is is something that he kind of wants to get past and get back to baseball as soon as possible, right? Yeah. But this is where what happened last year, I think, has a huge impact on the way the, the organization, Tory, and even some of the players are going to see things. It is not about you starting the season. It is about you making it the season. And he did go on to say he was glad that he did this because had it, you know, had he maybe thrown a, a fastball, you know, at 96 miles an hour or thrown it, you know, full speed, he might have hurt himself more. And this might be an injury that now he's out 
you know, a month or now that that label might be, you know, multiple weeks or how, or whatever the case may be. It yeah. really is a day to day situation because based on what, like Tori said, when he is asymptomatic, that's when they're going to get them back to throwing. But he is not going to be ready to play baseball when he gets back to throwing. He's going to have to ramp back up just like these pitchers do during spring training. And that is obviously going to leave a huge gap in the starting rotation to start the season. It's unfortunate yeah. because it's the exact thing we wanted to avoid. However, the Diamondbacks have three very capable pitchers who have been battling out for that spot. And they do have the luxury right now of just being able to turn to those young guys and have them fill in for Eduardo in his absence. It's just going to be interesting to see how the rotation plays out because obviously the way the guys are stretched out and the way things are scheduled, it, it doesn't seem like, you know, they're going to just move everybody up in the rotation. They can't just really move Brandon Fott up to like three and Merrill back up to two or yeah, whatever. Yeah, the Diamondbacks right? cannot start Brandon Fott on the third game of the season. Uh, as of right now, Tommy Henry lines up in Erod's spot. Uh, so if I were if I were guessing right now, I would guess that Tommy Henry will make the team as a starting pitcher and will start the third game of the season against the Rockies. Brandon Fott will stay in the number four spot. And then Ryan Nelson, as of right now, uh, lands in the number five spot. So uh, Jarvis, I guess, is still in still in the mix here. He's he's uh, lined up with Tommy Henry. So I guess if they didn't start Tommy Henry in the rotation, they could put Bryce Jarvis there and have him start the, the third game of the season. But it seems more likely that Henry will start and that Jarvis, I think uh, I think Jarvis has a pretty good chance to make the team as a reliever. That's one thing that Tori talked about. As far as the ramifications of this Erod injury, he said that the Diamondbacks are far more likely to have a long reliever. Uh, given that you have three pretty young pitchers in this rotation on opening day, uh, right? I mean, it's going to be Fott and then two out of the three of Jarvis, Nelson, and Henry. Um, oh, and Fott, yeah, Fott's also. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you've got, I mean, three-fifths of your starting rotation on opening day is going to be pitchers who are either uh, rookies or like rookie adjacent, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, you're going to want to make sure you have some coverage in the bullpen. I think Bryce Jarvis has a pretty good chance to make this team one way or another, or at least some long relief solution, whatever that looks like. It's hard for me to imagine there is a way to have a long relief solution at this point, though, without Bryce Jarvis. Making yeah, Bryce the team. Jarvis has to be a part of that long relief solution. And I will say in regards to Elisa's message in the chat, she said, Derek is a lot calmer than I thought he would be discussing this. Oh, don't get it twisted, Elise. <laughs> We're going to talk about J.D. Martinez here in a little while, so I need to conserve he's, he's as much energy, angry yeah. energy as I can for that. <laughs> but I'll also say that what Ryan Nelson did today mixed with Eduardo Rodriguez's confidence that he is fine. Like, he looked at me when I asked him, like I was like, how how are you feeling today? And he was like, great. Like it was yeah. like it was such an emphatic. Like he wanted us to know that he's fine. And I felt like that message was delivered. But of course, the team is gonna take precautions with him because there is no need to rush him at this time of the year. It sucks yeah. to lose him for two to three games potentially to start the year. But I don't even know if it's gonna be that much. Erod said several times that he thinks it's going to be a lot shorter than than the coaching staff believes it's going to be. <laughs> but that's just him. And, of course, nobody knows how he feels except him, right? Like, he could be lying, and he knows he's lying, or he could be <laughs> absolutely feeling great, and he's like, man, this is stupid, but sometimes you just got to wait until you're fully cleared and allowed to get back to baseball activities. The other thing that made me very calm was Ryan Nelson's performance today. The sure. man went out there and struck out nine and had 17 whiffs today ryan nelson moved into second place in all of spring training in strikeouts behind spencer strider today with 26 strikeouts and i think that there couldn't have been a better time for ryan nelson to have this big game like we know that tommy henry has kind of you know kind of solidified himself and it's not to say ryan hasn't pitched very well this spring but what a what a day to give the organization give tory and the coaching staff confidence that they're going to be okay with Ryan Nelson going out there and being their fifth starter by going out on a day like this and having 17 whiffs and nine strikeouts. Yeah, I'm looking at the Diamondbacks' whiff totals from last year. Uh, Merrill Kelly had was in the 20s in whiffs three times in three separate starts. Zach Allen hit 20 once. Uh, Tommy Henry had one outing where he had 18 whiffs. But yeah, I mean, you're looking at just a handful of starts all of last season where a D-back starting pitcher had 17 whips. That's a really, really big number. And this is not a guy that, frankly, we're used to seeing get much swing and miss, right? right? That was the whole thing with Ryan Nelson last year 
was that he just wasn't getting a ton of swing and miss on on anything really. Yeah. He he would get guys to two strikes and he was good at throwing strikes and staying in the zone, but he didn't have a way to put guys away. We've seen a very, very different starting pitcher in spring training so far. This is what Ryan Nelson had to say what was uh, in regards to what was working for him today. Yeah, I think there's a lot of carry and ride. And um, today, everything felt really good. I think that I worked ahead a lot and that was one of my main focuses from last outing when I went back and watched it. I was... 2-1 a lot, 2-0 a lot, didn't really throw a bunch of first pitch strikes, so that was my big focus today and um, makes it easier to kind of dip into the bag of tricks when you're working ahead, and I, I felt like I kept them off balance and had had some good stuff today. And like you said, uh, that was something last year that he was able to do was to get ahead. He just couldn't finish them off. Today, he yeah. was doing both of those things. He was staying ahead in the count. He was using his fastball. He had great command of the zone. And he was using his his other stuff to to really, at times, get those whiffs. His slider was slidering, as someone said. Uh, Ernesto said that, <laughs> right? Like, it's it's just, again, it's, it's these steps forward. And, you know, again, this competition might be that thing that refines both Tommy Henry and Ryan Nelson to be valuable assets in this organization, you know, just having to compete against each other for this job. I think it's kind of funny that uh, Ryan Nelson has found a way to get way more whiffs while also still throwing a ton of four seam fastballs. Yeah, he throws like, a fastball that, a lot. That was kind of the narrative coming into spring was like, all right, we need Ryan Nelson to start throwing his secondary stuff more. And today he had arguably his most impressive spring training performance yet. Yeah. And he threw 64% yes. four seamers. Yeah. But it works because Ryan Nelson got 11 whiffs on his four seam fastball. When Ryan Nelson throws his four seam fastball at the top of the zone, no one's hitting that thing right now. Mm -hmm. No, there are no. And granted, a lot of these guys are double A AA and triple A hitters, which is certainly a part of the equation here. But guys are not touching that pitch. And some of it has to do with Nelson throwing it a little bit harder. Uh, today, he averaged 95.5 with the four seamer. Last year, he averaged 94.4. He's consistently been about one mile an hour above where he was last year in spring training. Another factor is that Ryan Nelson is getting more extension on his four seam fastball than he did last year by about 0 0.3 inches, uh, which might not sound like much, but it's turning a pitch that two hitters looked like about 94 miles an hour last spring. This spring, it's averaging a perceived velocity of about 96 and a half miles per hour because he's getting difference. more extension, and that makes it look even faster to the hitter. And uh, we've we've certainly seen that uh, in these games. That pitch has been as electric as as it's ever been. Uh, Tori discussed Ryan Nelson's swing and miss today and what was working for him as far as his observations. So, yeah, I think there's a lot of carry and ride and a lot of velocity in this fastball. And now he's got something that's making a left turn. And right-handed hitters are reaching for that. And I think he struck out a left-handed hitter on, on a quality slider, too. So um, that, to me, is aptitude and trust. And those are the things that we're looking for from, from all of our players, not just the young ones. So um, he got information, took it, and he's running with it right now. Is that what it's like to see a Tori Lavello interview through Teo Mackey's eyes? <laughs> <laughs> Zing! Got his ass. Um, of course. That was so unnecessary. I know. Derek. I love the Teo. Teo wasn't even at. <laughs> he, wasn't he, was, even he was off today. <laughs> that's that's why I'm catching strays on your off day. That's what I do around here, oh Jesse. My gosh. Uh, He's never coming on this no, show. No, he'll totally come on again. He'll <laughs> forgive me. But uh, something that's kind of crazy to me is that Cattell Marte hit his first home run of spring today that did not he did that yeah. did not seem to be uh that that didn't like that didn't you know kind of uh compute for me because Marte has been having an MVP caliber spring already which makes me feel like that's going to lead right into an MVP caliber season but uh Marte currently leads all of MLB with 19 hits uh, which is no surprise because he's hitting like 500, 400, something crazy right now, I'm sure still. Yeah, we we talked uh, near the beginning of spring about how we thought Cattell Marte like, could genuinely hit 600 in spring training. And he might. unfortunately, that does not, that looks like a stretch at this point. He was one for four today, oh, yeah. which despite the, the homer, the, the numbers took a hit on a one for four day. He's down to a 426 batting average at Damn this it. point. So uh, if, if you were taking the over on on a 600 spring training batting average for Cattell, you're it's probably, probably not going to hit. Yeah, it's probably, it's probably not, not going to hit. But uh, yeah, he has been outstanding this spring and 
has looked locked in for weeks. I, I don't think Cattell necessarily uh, needs all of the. I mean, he's kind of looked ready for this season. I think from the from the first few day few games, he's been uh, his looked as locked in as he did really in in the postseason. And it's weird because he didn't really take time off. You know, like I know he did. I know yeah. they all took time off. But what we saw earlier than anybody else, and of course we know Corbin Carroll, like the next day after they were bounced from the World Series, Corbin Carroll was out at Salt River Fields hitting, you know, hitting and doing stuff, I'm sure. But um, actually, no, what was it? November 22nd at 6 a.m. I think that's what he told me was the day that he went <laughs> out there. Uh, Cattell, like the first video I saw of anybody training during the offseason was Cattell in the Dominican Republic hitting in like sure. a cage. Yeah. It's like the man took no time off and was just – you know, going to try to get better. I hope that doesn't impact him as far as like, you know, his conditioning. I mean, maybe that yeah. might, might be nice, to, you know, with the, with the way that baseball is to take a little time off after a run like that. But Jesse, you'll never guess who's tied for second for hits in all of Major League Baseball this spring. Oh, tied for it's not Nick Ahmed, is it? <laughs> That'd be hilarious. It he's, absolutely he's not. Are you insane? He's probably up there. Uh, Nick, up Nick there. Ahmed, I think in batting average, I think he's pretty close to Cattell. He might not have the same volume of, of at bats. It's, uh, it's, a, it's another shortstop we're a little familiar with. It's Blaze Alexander. Oh, sure. sure. 18 okay. hits yeah. this offseason, tied for second. Uh, and he's of played course, a lot. D backs played Blaze Alexander. They have played a lot. him yeah. a lot. Blaze absolutely has played a lot. Uh, and of course, you know that uh, there were some roster moves today, uh, and that kind of impacts Blaze a little bit, right? Blaze is still on the roster. I honestly expected, and I hate to say this, but just due to the same kind of thing that Jordan Lawler has to go through, right? I expected to see Blaze get sent back down because they don't really want somebody of his caliber just in a backup role. Sure. But to be honest, he's been so good. Uh, I I can't see why you wouldn't want him to stay on the major league roster and also potentially just straight up split time with Geraldo Perdomo. It's something the Diamondbacks were doing with Jerry P last year when they started the season. So it's not that it's not that, that unthinkable that they wouldn't want to do it this year. But uh, the Diamondbacks did have some roster moves today, optioning Andrew Saul Frank and Pavin Smith down to AAA Reno, reassigning uh, pitcher Jose Castillo to minor league camp and releasing Elvis Andrews. Uh, sorry, Merrill Kelly, you are officially the <laughs> oldest man on the team. But, uh, I mean, uh, we, we have Tori on these roster moves, but, I, I mean, I'm feeling like this is moving in the direction of Blaze Alexander actually making this team. It feels like that's going to happen. Is it just... Is it? Am I just getting my hopes up to be disappointed at that last series of <laughs> roster cuts right before we get to the games at Chase Field? I think it's very possible. Yes, I think it's very <laughs> possible. It. Uh, I knew it. I mean, they, so, you, you think Kevin Newman is so making the, the team so the, over Blaze? No. The, the, the Diamondbacks have four infielders vying for what appears to be two spots remaining in camp. It's Jace Peterson, Manuel Rivera, Kevin Newman, Blaze Alexander. What Jason the hell are we talking Jason about? Jason. You need two out of those four people. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, Blaze is Blaze is presumably here for a reason. Like, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna rule that out. I, I think it's, I think it's possible. The Diamondbacks have, have kind of circled around on their thinking of wanting to get Blaze everyday yeah. opportunities, and they're just like. Maybe we maybe we can get him enough opportunities. You know, maybe we can we can start him against every lefty. Yeah. I guess if you if you wanted to just have Perdomo be the the strong side of the platoon, you know, get him occasional opportunities at second and third. We've seen Blaze move around defensively quite a bit this spring. And he's done a good job. I don't want to rule it out, but I will just say that the I mean the thinking that we heard from the D backs front office a couple of weeks ago was that we want Blaze Alexander to play every day. Yeah. And that hasn't changed in right. the last couple of weeks. So it's hard for me to suddenly think that blaze automatically has a job just because he's one of the few guys remaining in camp emmanuel rivera is out of options and so if emmanuel yeah. rivera is not part of this team he's not part of this organization technically anymore they would have to dfa him yeah uh, kevin and, newman has an opt-out in his contract on march 25th i think and he's uh, also so, he was a non-roster invitee so he's different yeah, right i he's mean he's someone where you either you either put him on the opening day roster or you lose him to another organization most likely i, mean, correct. I, I don't think you'd be able to just option kevin newman to Reno. Well, and here's what tory uh tory discussed the roster moves including elvis and this is what he had to say in regards to you know all these guys including Pavin smith which uh, I know it might be a surprise to some people that he was sent down to Reno. Yeah, Pavin was, was they're all hard conversations. Pavin was maybe a little bit more complicated because 
he can hit. He's a good baseball player. Um, we just have a lot of really good baseball players in camp right now, and that's it means you got to send other good baseball players down to the minor leagues. Um, so my message to him was continue doing what you do best, play on both sides of the ball, improve as a first baseman, improve as an outfielder, and get your butt back to the big leagues by, by making statements. Um, <clears throat> Elvis, we just explained that um, you know, we have a couple other options that we're going to look at right now. And out of fairness to him, we just made this decision. And uh, he's got – give him a little bit of time to, to be creative, to find, him, find another organization. And if it doesn't happen, we would love to have him back. He's a quality human being. He still has some life in his body, and he's still got some good baseball ahead of him. It was just a really tight window that he was operating in. He got here late. The first game he played, he was being evaluated like he had been here as everybody else did. But I know those first four or five days are very hard for a player to gear up and be on spot on. So unfortunately, that was just where he was at, and he understood that. He was he was total pro about it. Um, the others, uh, Sal Frank, just being able to command the baseball, be aggressive, getting after it, all the things that he was he was doing last year that got him back to the or got him to the big leagues, um, and then Castillo. You know, we just told him continue doing what you're doing. The injury came at a bad time for him, and once again, when you're dealing with those tight windows, with those with those types of players, you got you got to really go out there and grind it out and and be be on top of your game every single chance you you're out there. And he just missed a little bit of time because of that injury. Oh boy, yeah, that that at least is right. You could tell how much it pained Tori to have that conversation. It really does, and I mean, yeah. I, I think we saw last year there was a point where I think Tori kind of got past the personal nature of some of these decisions because they they all hurt, right? Like one doesn't hurt more than another. And and I'm sure some some of them probably are a little easier, right? Like when he talks about Elvis uh leaving the building, I had to get that in there. Uh he obviously, you know, talked about, you know, wanting him to go out there and get an opportunity with another team and they want to try to do that as quickly as possible. It would you know. His time frame, just like some of these other free agents that had haven't been signed, you know, up to this point, uh, is is going to be very weird, and most of them are not going to be ready for the regular season at this point. So it, it gives him an advantage to try to go out there and sign with another team. But yeah, I mean, obviously, we know that there are guys that are playing better, and we know that Tory and and the front office have to continue to make these decisions based on you know the guys that are performing uh, their best. It's not easy, and. We've already yeah. seen an injury to a major part of the starting rotation that then impacts everybody. That depth is going to be important. There's no way that they're going to make it through this season without people getting injured. So these guys are going to be called on again. It's just right now the Diamondbacks do have kind of a good problem. They have too much talent, and they're going to have to send some guys away that we're probably going to disagree with. I think that the move out of all these that surprises me the most might be Elvis Andrews. Uh, yeah, just being because, released. yeah, yeah. We, we talked about him coming in and, and you'd figure if you're in his position and you maybe have a, a few different options on the table, you're not going to sign with a team unless you have a decent, unless you're at least led to believe you have a decent chance of making that team. Right. And uh, yeah, I mean, it seemed like when the D-backs made that move, they weren't super happy with the backup shortstop options they had in house. And he was a guy who wasn't great last year with the White Sox, but his numbers were were decent. He's a you know a good clubhouse guy that has a positive reputation in that respect. But yeah, he just came in and and just didn't really hit, right? I think it was two for 17 with uh, one walk, four strikeouts. Both of the hits were singles. It, it wasn't, it was yeah. only a handful of games. I mean, they didn't have much to judge him on, but the Diamondbacks decided to move on there. I also think Saul Frank is is interesting. Uh, Saul Frank was a high leverage reliever for the Diamondbacks in the postseason. Like this is a guy who is not like he was pitching important innings for the Diamondbacks in October yeah. at a time yeah. when Kyle Nelson uh, really wasn't. The backs were they were still using Kyle Nelson. He was still played a role in, in some of the postseason series, but uh, they were favoring Saul Frank toward the end of the yeah. season. He was the. He was the hot hand, and they were they were going to him in those big situations. And he was the guy that surprised us the most. Like Ryan Thompson, his success was yeah. was less surprising because He'd we looked at before. the numbers and we yeah. were like, "Man, this guy has been good." He just kind of had two bad outings with the Tampa Bay Rays that really made his ERA soar. And Ryan covered that when we had him on the show. You know what I mean? And that that yeah. can happen, but at least it makes sense when you go back. You look at his experience, his track record. 
his past performances like the rays were a team like the diamondbacks where they had to make difficult decisions based on the amount of talent they had they felt like ryan thompson was someone they could part ways with it was all to the Diamondbacks' benefit that he yeah. came over. For the Diamondbacks' but sake, they goodness they thank did. Thank goodness they got him, right? We <laughs> love Ryan Thompson. Tea time, tea time. But uh, Saul Frank, meanwhile, he was a bit more perplexing to us because nothing suggested that he should have been as good as he was. Not his past performances, not his peripherals, not much suggested that Saul I mean, Frank... I, I think he had like pretty compelling numbers in the minors. I mean, he was at 13.1 Ks per nine last year, that, but, yeah, that, but you, that, didn't, you right. didn't know how it was going to translate. Right. I mean, this nor, is a minor league pitcher. Nor was there a lot of hype around him. He wasn't a guy that was yeah. viewed as like a top prospect yeah. in the organization, right? right? So I, I guess my point was, is even when he had success, uh, there, there were things he was doing well, but yeah, it felt like, when is this guy going to come back down to earth? You know what I mean? Sure. It definitely felt like that when it came to Saul Frank. And so it's a bit and I, I think Nelson. I think Nelson has outpitched Saul Frank in spring. I mean, maybe there's a... Yeah, I don't think the D-backs necessarily made this decision going into spring training after what they saw in the playoffs. But Saul Frank was okay. I mean, he let four earned runs in nine innings, but he had five walks compared to eight strikeouts. Uh, Kyle Nelson, I think, just outpitched him this spring. And yeah. there's a seniority element there. So... Not not hugely surprising on that front. Go be hungry. Go take that experience from the World Series. Go take that experience for the playoffs. Want that again? And go shove in, in Reno, and you'll be back. If you can yeah. have a sub-4 ERA at Reno, we will take you back here as soon as possible. Uh, Jesse, where the hell is Paul Seawald? Uh, Paul- I need an answer <laughs> on that because I haven't seen my man in days. Yeah, Paul Seawald hasn't pitched since Monday, I believe, and I asked about that after the game today. And was given one of the one of the more fascinating injury diagnoses I've ever heard. Uh, Tori said he he's been the D backs have backed off Paul Seawald due to normal body aches. <laughs> can relate just just like <laughs> that is the most relatable injury i've ever heard in my life normal body aches yeah. every single day for me jesse so you i take guess a little leave he'll get rid of them but <laughs> they're still there so i guess the uh yeah i, I wouldn't be too concerned about uh seawall tory wasn't sure exactly when he was gonna pitch but it sounds like he'll pitch again in the next few days and should be ready to go for opening day so uh no no concerns there any uh updates on randall gritchick uh, it's sort of, it's the uh, same old, same old. Appa- apparently He's Randall Grichik ran the bases. Hey. I think today Tori didn't have a report on that pregame. We didn't get it from him post game. It's something we'll have to follow up on tomorrow. Uh, he seemed a little bit unsure, I believe of when, uh, Grishik could get into a game. If that's something that could happen. Uh, I don't think Randall Grishik is going to make the opening day roster. I think it's going to be Jake McCarthy making the team yeah. and Grishik opens the year on the IL probably for not very long. And then gets called up uh, or brought back to the majors in fairly short order. After that, might go to the minors and get some get some opportunities there, get some actual reps against live pitching, uh, and then yeah, we we should see him back in the majors before long. I would think. Well, all of this wonderful spring training updates have been brought to you by Factor Meal Kits, and it's very very on brand that Factor Meal Kits uh, sponsors our spring training um, activities, and that's because Jesse and I don't take care of ourselves at all do we eat meal do we get breakfast in nope we just get out to the ballpark and we just start recording dudes playing baseball so of course factor meals will definitely help us uh be able to sustain ourselves especially during the 162 game season uh factor meals eating better is never easier with factor meals delicious ready to eat meals never frozen always fresh food 35 different options to choose from every week including calorie smart protein plus and keto plus there's 60 add-ons to help you stay fueled up feeling good all day including those wonderful smoothies they have pancakes and breakfast Uh, there's a wide variety of easy options for the entire day like breakfast midday snacks and more so make sure to check out factor and everything they have going on head over to factormeals.com slash phnxdbacks50 and use code phnxdbacks50 to get 50 percent off that's code phnxdbacks50 at factormeals.com slash phnxdbacks50 to get 50 percent off does that say 50 percent off 50 50 percent off I no, said no, no, that must be 15 right no no that's no a, no that's no. A typo. no 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 damon one five i look at look at the little thing that you put up in the corner oh my god phnxd backs 50 half 50 off? percent off yes unreal makes it, it makes it cheaper than going to the grocery store and buying that frozen garbage get yourself a factor meal today uh and of course 
Uh, the base, the best thing about them is you can heat them up everywhere. Everywhere has a microwave. Even the press box at Salt River Fields, I found the microwave today. Yes. It's got yeah. a microwave for us to heat up our factory, factory meals, so we're all good there. Uh, also, check out Prize Picks if you want to uh, have some fun. Of course, especially during this time of the year, uh, we got all of this wonderful tournament action going on right now, and there's no shortage of high stakes basketball bo- basketball moments this time of year. Get on the excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app, where you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash. Cash Prize Picks is easy to play. You can make your picks and submit your entry in less than. 60 seconds of course they have quick withdrawals easy gameplay an enormous selection of players and stat types and that's what makes prize picks the number one daily fantasy sports app go to prizepicks.com slash phnx and use code, P- code phnx for a first deposit match up to 100 dollars. that's prizepicks.com slash phnx and use code phnx pick more pick less it's that easy uh and jesse our next segment of course uh, and every Friday is brought to you by our friends at OG's, and they're always about flavoring Fridays. You can check out all the wonderful things OG's Brands has to offer over at ogsbrands.com, not to mention uh, their brand new vegan gummies for those of you that are vegan, as well as the big OG's for big guys like me that like eating 100 milligrams in one bite. But I am going to need more than 100 milligrams of THC right now to deal with what we are about to talk about, because as many of you know, the news came out. That Just Dingers Martinez, a.k.a. J.D. Martinez, a.k.a. The Love of My Life, signed with the New York Mets for $12 million. A paltry $12 million, Jesse. Surely you mean $20 million, right? <laughs> no, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to leave you and just do this by yourself. Because <laughs> if you're going to start off like that, start pissing me off. God damn it. Yeah, twelve million is is definitely lower than I think. Some outlet had twelve million. I want to say FanGraphs estimate was twelve million. Uh, did, are you aware of the way no, that I this money? Wanna, no, I don't want it. I'm not aware. I'm all I'm aware of is he's not a Diamondback. That's what I'm aware of. <laughs> all right, I guess this. I just have to do the show now. Uh, okay, Derek. Derek is coming back. Uh, so he he's making four point five million dollars this year, Derek, with one point five million deferred each year through like twenty thirty eight from twenty thirty four to twenty thirty eight. Uh, and I'm gonna go out on a limb and say if the Diamondbacks two months ago before they signed Jock Peterson come to Scott Boris and offer four point five million dollars with one point five million deferred for five years in the mid twenty thirties, Scott Boris would have found the tallest building in Arizona and told them to go jump off of it. That's what he would have told them. That's exactly what he would have told them. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if Scott Boris would have said that. Yes, but I, but well, I don't. Well, Scott Boris I'm paraphrasing. He's he would have used much more colorful language. I am furious right now, Jesse. Twelve million dollars. You're absolutely right. There is no way. There is no way that when the Diamondbacks were pursuing their DH, that there. Thank you. You just let that play the whole time. There is no way that they offered him. 12 million and they rejected or like anyone but the diamondbacks have to have offered him that or more this has to be scott boris taking another goddamn l you waited too long scott just admit it to us you are washed your days are up old man the future is now you you done you good you ready go ahead (laughs) let's talk about jock peterson and his 9.5 million dollar with a freaking opt-out god i'm so upset (laughs) So if we look at how Jock Peterson and JD Martinez's numbers compare uh, for the uh, the, the twenty twenty no, three season, do that. Let's, uh, uh, JD Martinez was better. There's no way, there's no way around that. JD hit two seventy one last year with thirty three homers and eight ninety three OPS. Jock Peterson at two thirty five, average fifteen homers, a seven sixty four OPS. JD was worth two point two. Fangraphs WAR. And Jock Peterson is worth 0.6. We did say, we have talked about Jock Peterson's underlying numbers uh, were quite strong last year and suggest that maybe he was better than those numbers showed. But yes, the Diamondbacks did give Jock Peterson $12.5 million guaranteed. They also, on top of that, to kind of solve this same DH problem, they also gave Randall Grishik $2 million guaranteed. Plus Thank you incentives. for including that. So you're really, I mean, I think that's really the comparison you have to do. It's not just Martinez versus Peterson. It's Martinez versus the platoon combination of Peterson and Grishik which the Diamondbacks paid 
several more million dollars for. Uh, but yes, it, it's all about timing, right? I mean, I don't think we need to have this sourced to know that Scott Boris wasn't taking $12 million two months ago. He wanted right. more than that. He probably wanted a two-year deal instead of a one-year deal. Three we years, maybe. A, we talked a lot on this show about how we thought it was going to take a two-year deal to get J.D. Martinez, uh, but that window closed, and like Scott Boris has done with pretty much all of his other clients this this offseason, it appears he just waited too long and was backed into a corner. And I know there was one report that the Mets, like, we're not going to sign JD unless it got to a, a point where it was just irresistible. And I can understand why this contract would feel pretty irresistible to them. 4.5 million this year. You're deferring the rest for way out in the future. Uh, it's a really good contract for a guy who is very, very good in 2023. It does give him that stability in the future for him to like know that those are going to be his days of not playing baseball and sure. he's still going to be getting paid money uh i will say this in order to 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 calm myself down if you take a look at jock peterson's 2022 numbers in san francisco it's very it's a very different story right yeah. you're talking about a guy with yeah. an 874 ops a 274 batting average 23 home runs 70 rbi this is a guy that is very much closer to jd martinez now it's not to say either of these guys are young but it does feel like J.D. Martinez has a few more miles on him. You know, there is that yeah. thing about the fact that... Jock is 31, J.D. is 36. Yeah. Right. And so I think from that perspective, Jock Peterson is much more likely, I think, to have a better season than he had last year than J.D. is going to have that a better season fair. than he had last year with the Dodgers, right? Yeah. Uh, and as Groundhog Mama pointed out earlier in the chat... Uh, JD JD is going to start the league or start the year in the minors like we talked about where some of these guys are coming into camp so late based on them signing so late that they are behind and they need to get themselves ramped up because they haven't been playing baseball like at a competitive level you know this this entire offseason yeah Blake Snell I think also I, I saw that he's not going to be ready for opening day either it's Probably a safe assumption at this point with guys who are just signing yeah, now. Anybody I signing mean, past like the yeah, 15th of I mean, March, you can, right? You can build up to a certain pitch count on on practice fields or whatnot, maybe find some hitters to face. But like until you have access to face mm -hmm. real major league hitters, uh, you know, over multiple innings, you're, you're not really going to be ready for the regular season. Uh, yeah, I mean, it like, sure. Hypothetically, if the Diamondbacks had known how this was so going angry. to play out in advance now. Yeah, I guess you I guess you wait and you don't sign Jock, you don't sign Grishik, you wait until March 21st and you and you outbid the Mets for JD Martinez, I guess. But there's a lot of risk there, right? If you don't sign Peterson or Grishik when you do, those guys probably find deals with other teams and then you kind of wind up in a Martinez or bust situation, which could be a little uncomfortable. Like we, we know how this played out now, but the Diamondbacks wouldn't have had any assurance at the time that J.D. Martinez's price was going to fall or that even if it did, that they would necessarily wind up with him, right? Like Martinez might have his own preferences. Maybe a, another team swoops in at the last second or whatever. You don't always have full control you're over You're talking for so long that it's so, not... I'm, you're calming me down, and I hate that you're calming me down. <laughs> I pulled the microphone out of the stand so I could yell because Tim's right. I don't want to agree to this. You're, I'm, I'm, I'm falling to the dark side. You're convincing me. This was a stupid idea, and we should have pushed all of our chips in on JD. Uh, and I hope I'm wrong. I hope we're playing baseball in Jocktober, and I hope that's all we could talk about at that point but i am very skeptical that that's the case and i don't think that we're going to see jo i don't know i don't know what to say jock peterson is really raking in mlb the show for me so i'm i'm conflicted <laughs> but i will say that jd martinez uh going to the mets for 12 million dollars is very upsetting um i do feel like the team is more well-rounded the way that we are currently stack though right like, yeah it's hard to say i mean the when we had this conversation a few months ago one of the one of the points against jd was that his projections uh which we talked to dan zimborski himself the god of all projections uh about why jd's projections for for this season are actually pretty poor yeah. like jock peterson according to the computers is going to be a better player in 2024 than jd uh granted there's value in having you know, having only one roster spot taken up by your like DH solution rather than having two roster spots as the D-backs have now. I guess you could argue that the D-backs have some outfield flexibility now. 
uh, you know, Grisha can play some center field. That's something that JD certainly couldn't do. But in general, you know, you'd rather have one guy rather than a, rather than a platoon just from a roster construction standpoint. Um, but yeah, it's you know, it's a hindsight is twenty twenty situation. Uh, I I don't I just think this, this just wasn't meant to be for the D backs like it just wasn't meant to be Tim, and Tim just wants us to stop as sad as that is for for the vibes which I you know I I do I do very much understand that uh, Groundhog Mama is correct J D Martinez uh, is older than Merrill Kelly so he could have freed him that's, of that obligation that's possibly the the best argument in favor of getting yeah JD. right because yeah. like see Merrill's like old man Merrill right Merrill at times like. Yeah, I mean, I get it. He has big get off my lawn kind of energy. We've seen that from him, right? <laughs> JD Martinez, he's like that suave older guy. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> he's that dude that's still wearing like a fedora and stuff. Oh you man, think Merrill Kelly has big get off my lawn. <laughs> he absolutely has get off my lawn energy. Have you? Do you not remember him getting angry at the air conditioning at Chase Field? Come on, Jesse. Um, yeah, I think that was or, a pretty, a or, pretty valid complaint. <laughs> I think that was pretty valid. Cramping. What about him hating the throwback colors and then also not liking the current colors? Like he. I mean, that's a great I, I example. Mean, he doesn't I, like anything. There is, I, I, I don't even feel like happy? I need to justify it. The fact that you're surprised I'm saying Merrill Kelly has get off my lawn energy is is more surprising to me than anything else. But uh, I'll also say that this hurts way more than the Giants signing Jorge Soler to the three-year $42 million deal, even though it's not like a that tremendous... That one was also lower than That's what we, I'm saying. It's all not these a tremendous contracts amount were lower than, we, lower. Thought, than yeah. we thought they would be. Yeah. It's because Scott Boris is washed. That's the point of Correct. this whole segment. Correct. It's not how angry I am about J.D. Martinez. It's that Scott needs to hang him up. You know what I mean? Get get the jersey up in the rafters and, and call it a career because, um, you know... Well, no, wait. Uh, change change your tune first. Uh, sign some extensions, including Zach Gallon's extension, and then hang it up. That's what I need him to do. But How, how old do you think Scott Boris is? 238 years old. Wow. I don't know. How, how long do vampires live? I don't know. <laughs> Tell me that. How old is Scott Boris? He's 71. That, you see? Yeah. He's an, old, Come he's on, an older man. guy. He's an older Come guy. Come on, man. Go enjoy your time. Stop harassing these Major League Baseball teams. They're done with your shenanigans. But, uh, of course, we could all use to save a little money. Uh, in order to deal with people like Scott Boris. And, of course, a great place to do that is Desert Financial Credit Union. For more than 84 years, Desert Financial has been Arizona's largest, most trusted local credit union, dedicated to uh, creating exceptional experiences by giving back to both their community and their customers. Uh, They also are all about providing financial solutions uh, for not only everything that you need, but for your future and for the future of your family. They got me started on my home ownership journey, and they can get you started as well. Look to Desert Financial for checking and savings accounts, mortgages, loans, credit cards, investment options, and most importantly, peace of mind when trusting the financial financial institution that you bank with. Uh, when you open a free checking account online, get $200 in bonuses. Get started by visiting desertfinancial.com slash 200. Uh, and then when you save that money, you get that extra money. We all go have a good time with it because we're here uh, for a good time, not a long time. Remember that, Scott Boris. Uh, and a great way to have a good time is to check out Gila River Resorts and Casinos because no one does it better. They offer an authentic and immersive experience with an unprecedented precedented level of entertainment. Words are hard for me sometimes, you guys. Uh, you won't find it anywhere else in the desert. They set a high bar. Their state-of-the-art gaming floor has over 800 slot machines, 15 blackjack tables, live gaming tables, and Arizona's largest casino sports book. Head to Gila River Resorts and Casinos and let them show you what Next Level is all about. You do you at Gila River. Visit play at Gila.com for more details. <sighs> what do you want to talk about less right now, Jesse? Uh, <laughs> the Fanatics jerseys <laughs> or the Shohei Otani gambling scandal? <laughs> I think I'm pretty, I'm pretty over the Otani thing. Yeah, Derek. I'm, I'm ready to talk about things. pants again. Yeah, Let's talk about were. pants. Nope, we're not. <laughs> if you pick the wrong choice, we're talking about Otani because MLB has officially launched an investigation into this situation. Uh, and of course, uh, that is, it's very weird. The whole situation is weird. The reason why it's weird is because uh, the the federal investigation into the matter is still ongoing. And based on the parties involved, uh, the MLB Department of Investigations, who began their formal investigation of this situation today, uh, they don't they don't have a lot of, I, I guess, a, a, a lot of uh, uh, ground to stand on here, Jesse, because 
Shohei Otani, based on the MLBPA, uh, you know, and and his involvement with obviously the Players Association, can decline talking to them about this investigation due to the fact that there is a federal investigation going on about it. So MLB's investigation is far less important than the federal one that could involve criminal Kay. charges being filed against people, including Otani, right? So that's so insane. That's crazy, right? And then you also have the fact that the Due to the fact the Dodgers fired uh, eBay, uh, yeah. he no longer is required to, uh, I guess, be be a part of this investigation. He doesn't have to. He, like, if they would have suspended him and kept him as an employee, it would have forced him to take part in the investigation and provide knowledge. But at this point, he doesn't have to provide anything to the MLB investigators. Um, and in the span of two days, Otani's uh, handlers or you know, his his representatives have essentially moved from saying he paid for Mizuhora's gambling debts yeah. to the attorneys announcing Otani is the victim of this massive threat, threat theft. So and 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 Ipe telling them in the process that uh, that Otani had had no idea that this money was being taken from his account or whatnot, which is obviously inconsistent with what Ipe had originally told the SPN. And that's the disconnect that we're all trying to still trying to figure out and probably will be for quite some time uh i i do think it was a strategic move by major league baseball not a coincidence that they announced they were investigating this on a friday night at like six o'clock eastern time <laughs> with march madness in full swing i think that that, that was a smart smart move by uh, them yeah uh yeah but yeah i mean if major league baseball wasn't launching an investigation into this I, i'd be a little concerned like if the federal government is involved you should probably as a league be it like feels pretty half-assed what was what was wild yeah. to me was maria our favorite dodger fan who was in here last night she even admitted that if this was happening to the diamondbacks much like you said uh damon about if this was <laughs> happening to anybody but otani it would have been investigated faster she was like if this was the diamondbacks you guys would have no, been investigated someone else already. actually said that uh, maria was oh, actually was on the side of uh, Otani's a generational baseball player with with hundreds of millions of dollars, but sure he's gambling, which doesn't make any sense because Michael Jordan was a generational basketball player with hundreds of millions yeah. of dollars. Yeah, Michael and, Michael Jordan absolutely ruins that. And case. he and he no, uh, notably, you know, never gambled. Michael Jordan. I, I, I think the thing is for me personally, and I think for a lot of people, it is far easier to believe based on the way Otani is as a person, the way he conducts himself, the reason why we love him is that he has this childlike nature to him. He has just this joy of playing the game of baseball. And the one thing about that that I will pair with that is being naive, right? Typically, when you're a wholesome, joyful person, there is a, a matter of the world not beating you down yet. So you tend to be a little bit naive. This is exactly what happens to people to make them a bit jaded and a little less like Otani naturally is. When a friend of yours, a confidant, someone you trusted, ends up stealing money from you and not just a little bit, a lot of money. Like it's not going to put a dent in Otani's bank account in the grand scheme of things. That's enough money to change most people's lives. Right. Yeah. So like, that's the kind of thing that then makes you not the wholesome, innocent person you are anymore because you realize how terrible the world can be. I think that's a lot of assumptions, Derek. I am making a ton of assumptions there. I'm, You're I'm, giving I'm him severe making, benefit of the doubt. I, I think that <laughs> assuming that these gambling debts that everybody say isn't Otani's, are Otani's, is also making a lot of assumptions, right? We've made some wild accusations in regards to this. And the reason why is because, much like Jesse said, we've waited all this time for something to come out about Otani. <laughs> and the most controversial thing prior to this has been the fact he called his wife a regular Japanese woman. And she was, in fact, a fucking baller when, when it comes yeah, to basketball. Yeah. She's like a Japanese legend when it comes to basketball. He totally undersold how important his wife was. Kind or of a who she was, move. Right? It's, eh, it's, it's, that's, it's, not, it's, that's not that cool. It's a guy that once again lives, lives his life very privately, which is another yes. thing that we've acknowledged yes. about Otani is that he tends to be very private, right? I do think evidence is kind of mounting at this point that it, it's, it still seems highly unlikely to me that Otani is the one who was doing the gambling and he was kind of using Ipe to do that again. Non-zero chance, as we said the other day, we can't we that. can't rule that out we until can't. the investigation is complete. It would be reckless uh, to rule that. But out, Jeff Jesse. Fletcher did come out and uh, he covered he's covered the Angels for a long time, and he spoke with several of Otani's former teammates, 
and uh, none of them wanted to be quoted by name or whatnot, understandably so. But he said that there was a consensus that Otani paid zero attention to other sports. Uh, and if if you're if you have a gambling addiction, which is basically what people are hypothesizing here, uh, you would probably be paying attention to other sports. Like you would you would be dialed in at least on some level. It just seems really far fetched to me. It seems like a conclusion that yeah. people are jumping to. Non zero chance, but uh, seems far Lem- more likely that Otani is just a nice guy who went out of his mm-hmm. way to help Ipe yeah. and maybe made a serious mistake by doing so. Right, and I think again. The retraction, the change of direction might have been more about the fact that even though he did this innocently to help a friend, he still might have committed a crime by doing it, right? So then you want to try to distance yourself from admitting you committed a crime or, you know, again, uh, even, even having that go down that path. What I will say... And this is a terrible metaphor. You guys are all going to hate me for. I absolutely shouldn't make it, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, I'm so scared. It's like if something like this were to involve Corbin Carroll. And the reason why I say that is because (laughs) Jesse and I are around Corbin Carroll quite a bit. And it would be absolutely unbelievable to us based on how much this man cares about baseball and how much his life is dedicated to it. Like, Like you said, I've seen Corbin Carroll just straight up say he doesn't care really about other sports and stuff when he's talking to his teammates and such, right? So like <laughs> what Brandon fought in the playoffs just straight up said that he doesn't he doesn't watch other sports. Yeah, which right, is, right. Which he is was one of the more hilarious with things anything that you came, guys were talking about, through, right? Yeah. So some of these guys, when they say this stuff and you're around them, you just you kind of know them a bit as a person. It doesn't mean that people still can't be what they're, you know, be something different than what they portray at work or you know, around, around other people, but it's just hard to believe sometimes when you get to know these players that they are capable of doing something that you would perceive not to be, you know, characteristic of them, right? Shohei Otani is one of those guys that's pretty much dedicated himself to the game of baseball. So just the fact of him even paying attention to other sports is something that's, that seems ridiculous to some of his former teammates, let alone the idea of him gambling on those sports. So uh, I, I do think that there's, you know, it's interesting that this comes out. I don't think a lot will probably come out of this investigation, considering that neither party needs to cooperate. Neither party are forced to cooperate. Uh, based on MLBPA rules, Shohei Otani has, can, can completely decline cooperating with this investigation. And it and, sounds like he will continue to play. That's the other, that's the other big thing. We have no reason to believe will. as of right now that he will not be on the active roster or whatever uh, once, once the rest of the, the regular season gets underway fully expect Otani to to continue to play every day for the Dodgers. Elise says, I'm sure the testimony of the teammates will be all MLB needs to close the investigation by early next week because, yeah, <laughs> ultimately, the MLB wants this to go away, right? I mean, MLB, <laughs> uh, th- this does not benefit MLB in any way by this becoming a scandal or becoming bigger. The ultimate... No, it, it, it doesn't, but I, I, I think that if MLB actually had reason to believe that Otani was, was out of line doing some actual betting of his own that MLB would very much have to come down hard on that because yeah, especially true. in an age where very sports true. betting is becoming increasingly prevalent, that's, I mean, that's a, a battle that's going to, that's going to, there's going to be situations like this in the future. Not, probably not exactly like this, yeah. uh, but there's going to be conflicts involving betting co- that come up in the future and MLB can't afford to let anyone, you know, uh, get by without a proper, uh, you know, disciplinary action regardless of how big the name is attached to that player. Uh, but again, I don't, I don't think that I, I, Otani is, that. I don't think Otani is going to, I know Damon's going to hate this, but I, I do think I like Otani a lot and I've always liked Otani and Jesse knows that I have a shirt with Otani's face on it a whole bunch. I mean, Burn Damon, it. do you think that major league baseball is going to just cover this up? And, <laughs> I, think and... that, I think if they would for anybody, it would be this guy. Yeah, but, but you're talking about a federal investigation here. Major League Baseball, it, it's, I just don't think it's logistically going to be possible if Otani actually did what some people are thinking he did for Major League Baseball to simply overlook it. Because it would be so obvious. There's yeah. a federal investigation. It's an actual crime if the that investigation like, provides evidence that, that he di- is in the wrong, then yes, baseball will come down on him. But I think that... You know, if if they can't prove anything in the federal investigation, then baseball would would be more than happy to sweep it under the rug. 
Carlos makes a great point in the chat. He says, all this proves is that sports betting should be legalized in California already. If it wasn't through an illegal bookie, no one would care. That is I mean, it's true. Fair. There would be no investigation. There would be no crime broken. No, That's because- not true in the NFL. In the NFL, the, there's guys that have been gambling on legal states, and they get in a lot of trouble when they've been caught doing, like, they've been suspended for a year, like well, Calvin still, Ridley. You still, like, okay. I mean, you can't bet on your own sport, regardless of whether betting is sports betting is is legal in that state. i'll say i'll say this though sometimes the problem with you can't that, even have the apps in team facilities sorry derek but like no, you're right. but like yeah i i know a guy personally who uh like i've known for a long time who was in the lions organization and he bet on other sports in the lo- like team facilities like on basketball and they suspended him for six games so derek hall huh. actually was asked about this and he clarified something interesting was that you can't bet when you're in part of Major League Baseball or an employee of Major League Baseball on baseball at all. And that doesn't mean just Major League Baseball. You can't bet on international baseball. You can't bet on tournaments. You cannot bet on baseball. And that is a rule and part of MLB, right? Um, and so that, I thought that was interesting because I didn't know how far that reached. And Derek Hall was adamant that, like, it's all of baseball you can't bet on. Yeah, uh, they and make it's not sure- just players. It's also interpreters everybody and every yeah. everyone who is directly Clubbies, connected to the game. Yeah. yeah grounds crew if you work for mlb if you are an uh, employee of mlb you cannot bet on baseball right and so yeah i mean there i, I don't know i i think honestly I, this is so crazy to say because it feels like obviously I'm, I'm defending you know this but like when you go to a legal bookie right like as I feel, you do as you do <laughs> i feel like you're gonna bet way more money right like and i mean one of the pr- things that came out about this was that mizahora got himself in a hole and then felt like he needed to like bet his bet way, his out, way of, out. out of yeah. it right and i mean like the, the i lose five dollars and i like don't blink an eye i don't have to bet myself out of a hole for five dollars and such right but if you're going to a legal bookie Maybe you need to make it worth it. Like you're not you're not going all the way to the black market, Jesse, just for a twenty dollar bet. It's gotta be it's gotta be five stacks or higher, baby. Like we're not doing little things, right? Uh, Honestly, anyway. that would be like like kind of, like could you imagine if the dollar figure in question here was like mm-hmm. like two hundred dollars, yeah, right? Four yeah. point five million. <laughs> That's but like technically, it would still be a serious <laughs> it's, breach it's still of, a crime. of the law. It's, like, whether it's <laughs> fucking twenty dollars or, or four point five million, like Jesus Christ. Right? I mean, they might as well be the same for Otani. This is right? gonna ruin Otani. You know that, right? Like Otani's never gonna be the same out of this. We have lost our sweet innocent baby Shohei Otani <laughs> forever, and you know that, Damon. The man is Good. never gonna be Seems. playing baseball as innocently as he ever did. This is my championship. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> Otani's yeah. court here will be like me watching my team in the world series <laughs> oh boy it well. will be interesting to see how he responds on the field through all of this that is one thing that i will say uh you know even even if oh even if otani yeah. as i am you know led to believe i think is the most likely scenario if otani did not actually do any of the betting or anything and he you know was just trying to help a friend out and and put himself in a bad situation in the process how much he's is this still, gonna still weigh on him yeah mentally. like this situation yeah. would weigh on anyone if i if i were in his shoes right now uh and you know presumably having like not really made any serious moral mistakes on my own i'd have to get over I, jesse's betrayal jesse betraying me and stealing 4.5 million that's i mean you're <laughs> we're the closest work relationship either one of us have you know that right we're basically wow. show a and he pay right here right so <laughs> i mean you interpret for me all the time on the show that actually is a very fitting comparison <laughs> that, that's but, fair that's no fair. i mean seriously though like yeah like i'm supposed to just go out there and do my job even though this happened and baseball as we know is a yeah. very mental sport it's a very cerebral sport where totally that stuff really can impact you on the field like i said <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if uh, if I'm not worried about it impacting him. I hope it does, in fact. But of course, while Shohei gets his house uh, in order and has a lot of house cleaning to do, you can get your house in order uh, with our friends over at Empire Today. Of course, Empire Today can help you get the right flooring for your home uh, and help you do all the things this uh, this off season that you can. We don't have a lot of time until opening day, so if you want to get yourself prepared for the big day. Empire Today can help you out. They keep shopping for floors simple with a curated product selection. They also let you shop at home with their virtual uh, floor designer, which is a great way to see how the new floors will look in any space. It's easy. You just have to snap a picture of the room, and you can see how the new floors will look in your house. Empire Today also services their own warranties. If there is an issue that arises, just call Empire 
They service all warranties themselves. Schedule a free in-home estimate today. All listeners can receive $350 dis- discount when they use promo code PHNX. Restrictions do apply. See empiretoday.com slash PHNX for details. And last but not least, of course, make sure to take an adventure with our friends from Arizona Lottery. Arizona Lottery, uh, obviously, as we've talked about, at length has introduced their brand new promotion called Arizona Adventure. There's some fun ways to play, including playing with their new lottery tickets featuring three iconic uh, landscapes. You can also enter tickets online for a chance to win $1 million in cash in Arizona travel prizes. But most importantly, you can play Arizona Adventure by checking in at geolocated adventures at 10 destinations across the state from Flagstaff to Yuma. That will get you out there enjoying this beautiful state of ours. Arizona Lottery says proceeds from ticket sales support environmental conservation, among other important initiatives across the state. Arizona Lottery is not just about playing games and winning prizes. It's also about giving back to the state and its communities. Visit azadventure.com for more information on how you can take an adventure for a chance to win $1 million in cash and Arizona travel prizes. Uh, Carlos's comment just made me laugh here because he's like, I will forever call him a degenerate gambler while also placing future bets and playing blackjack every day. <laughs> Hell that, yeah, is, Carlos. that is literally me. Hell yeah. I, like, like Otani is a dirty, <laughs> disgusting gambler. And no. like, I'm sitting here like, oh, do I have a boost that I can let place on this jump match? In, as, as, as Damon is hosting the on, PHNX yeah, bets show. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, <laughs> it, that's it for sure. It makes me sick that this guy is gambling. Yeah. Also, well, uh, do you guys like any lines later for let's tomorrow's talk about, yeah, let's, play, I mean, what, March Madness games, games that we can get on yeah. after we're done the show? You and I need to talk, of course. Uh, <laughs> make sure to not miss out on the PHNX bet show, by the way. Uh, we appreciate you guys for being here. Make sure, most importantly, forget me, forget this man. You follow Damon Dog on Twitter. He is at Damon, D-A-W-G. And, of course, we are Damon's dogs. Bark, bark, bark. There's a lot of hot fire and like just anger and vitriol coming out of that Twitter account. It's good. In the last couple it's of days good. here. Yeah, like, he really, like he really, my hate is really flowing. He lets his freak flag fly over there on his account. Make sure not to miss that out. But of course, I'm at cap underscore K man with a K. This absolute lunatic is at Jesse and Friedman. Our show is at PHNX underscore D backs. But of course, all roads lead to at PHNX underscore sports on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Um, yeah, I mean, it is what it is around here. Uh, by the way, uh, sports gambling is legal in the state of Arizona. So we are not doing anything uh, like what those guys are doing over there. But <laughs> of course, uh, we thank you guys for all of your humor and your support for being here tonight. Uh, of course, uh, make sure you have your wonderful night. Now, here's the thing. We only did four shows this week. What does that mean? We'll be back tomorrow. Fifth show, 11 a.m. Join us then. We are going to be talking about uh, Diamondbacks opening day starters and MLB making a crazy prediction about the Diamondbacks that we hope comes true. So make sure to join us tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Bring some cereal. I like that s'mores, the Golden Graham s'more cereal. It's excellent. Make sure to bring me some of that. Uh, In the meantime, we hope you have a wonderful night. We thank you again for stopping by. And remember, kids, baseball is fun. But it is so much more fun when you don't miss opening day with a day to day to day to day to day injury. We all silly like the mayor. 